I ran a research group at ITT Corporation where, interestingly, um, it was a project that I was absolutely certain was going to fail. But I learned that if you have a $2 billion budget, you can buy your way through a few problems. <laughs> and uh, the original version of Objective C um, happened uh, within a month of the issue of the Byte Magazine issue. Uh, Brad walked in with the issue of Byte Magazine and said, you know this new 68,000 Unix machine that we have in this convenient little box, if you'd let me take that home for a couple weeks, I think I could build an object-oriented extension to C language. Uh, and I said, uh, if you can get it done in two weeks, you have my permission, you know, be sure to tell the guard before you're walking out with the computer. <laughs> right. Wasn't exactly was a laptop. Back, well, it was back in the days when, you know, computers took up rooms instead of uh, you know, uh, trunks. So efficiency, that's that kind of uh, is something that's uh, consistent throughout your career. So efficiency in language, but you also talk a lot about efficiency in software programmers and programming uh, methodologies. It's because most of my, all my career has been spent in the commercial world as contrast to the academic world. So uh, in the commercial world, you know, more people will buy programs that run fast than, than will buy pe programs that run slowly. Right. <laughs> they also like for them to work, I've found. <laughs> Fancy that. Fancy that. I think that, so, I think that the reason that Objective-C, you know, uh, has survived uh, is because it was a pure superset of C, meaning we didn't change anything that was already there. Uh, we uh, made uh, the distinction that when you sort of uh, shifted gears and went into the object-oriented world uh, by way of a square bracket, it was reasonably clear that you were now in the object world. And we imagined from the very beginning that you know a lot of lower level capabilities would be built up, classes would be built up, and then users could write applications strictly inside the square brackets. Uh, and so I think, I think had we um, had we designed the language so that it was, you know, a a variant of C uh, with uh, unique syntax, uh, it would have failed for sure. Uh, but we were able to, and and I mean, one of the reasons that we had this quote insight was. We had the source code to the uh, uh, Xerox version of Smalltalk, and so there was this huge library of pre-existing components that had been built over the prior 15 years, and we could, if we, if we adhered strictly to the to the object-oriented notions, or as close as we could to the object-oriented notions of Smalltalk, then we had this gigantic advantage of uh, taking advantage of I don't know. 150 person years of effort done at Xerox Park that was uh, by some really smart people that had tried lots of other experiments and failed. Right. Uh, so I, we were at a trade show in Los Angeles promoting our our new uh, language. And there's actually a funny story about the language that people would appreciate. Which is the, the very first brochure that we built about Objective C, we we tried to find this example that we could show that that people could understand that would be. Uh, uh, clear and, and conspicuous, but it wouldn't be obvious that it came from something else. So we, we had a taxi cab e example, and we were just astonished at how many taxi cab companies called us up and said, <laughs> we understand that you have this new programming language that's optimized for building taxi cabs. <laughs> that's good. And the other, the other version of that story was after the very first trade show that we went to, the, the, the company was being run out of my attic. Uh, and one Monday morning, my wife had thrown all the, the dirty clothes from the upstairs that are from our three daughters um, uh, down to the front uh, of the, down to the bottom of the stairs. And she looked out the window and there was this extremely distinguished looking man that looked for all the world like Albert Einstein, who was walking up the driveway. And he, she said, oh my God, we've got a business visitor. So she swept up the clothes and ran the other end of the house. And I came down and greeted him and it was a, it was a, a, a distinguished Israeli uh, computer scientist that had gone to this conference, um, had uh, seen the address of the company, and was driving nearby and thought he would just stop by the company. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in my pajamas upstairs working or something. Like that. But he, he uh, actually bought a copy of the product in cash and proceeded back to, uh, uh, to Israel and became the first Israeli developer of Objective-C in, in early 19, well, in, in, in uh, early 1984. So uh, um, 
Steve Jobs walks up to you at, at your booth at one of these shows? Uh, no, one of the people working for him. Oh, okay, I thought it was Steve. Uh, it wasn't Steve. And said, and said, uh, uh, you know, this might be, uh, this might be of interest to us. Um, I had actually already spotted them and recognized the name. And you, Apple was a customer of ours already, um, and so. Uh, uh, as a result of that conversation, I changed my plans and went back by way of Palo Alto and spent a couple of days with them. And uh, uh, before long, they decided to to use the the, uh, the language as a part of their uh, system. And and we we had these tough negotiations that ultimately this, this, is, is anybody here involved in a startup company? <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's here's what's important about tonight. So as the as the you know the co-founder of this company and the 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 the, uh, the legal department, I uh, negotiated a tough contract <laughs> with Steve Jobs uh, that would have had the, the, the if currently still in place, uh, which sadly it is not, would have paid us five dollars for every device using Objective C. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 all the venture capitalists around said, oh, what a silly contract. Why the hell would you ever sign something like that? <laughs> if you do the math, you can figure out why you might want to sign it. <laughs> right, right. You know, the, your language that you helped develop uh, with Brad um, is now, you know, part of such a revolution in software and, you know, creating, you know, just untold value in the world and uh, touching so many lives. I mean, how does that feel? How does that feel? Would feel better if the five dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's app's going to go to four ninety nine. I had a young, seventy three year old QA manager <clears throat> who had. Two ships shot out from under him in, uh, in uh, three ships shot out from under him in World War II, and gone back to school at MIT and learned a bit about technology. Uh, and he had a very simple uh, notion of quality assurance, which uh, sounds so simple, uh, but when you start actually thinking about it, it's it's really a rather deep thought. And that is, you get the worst error out first, and keep doing that until the time runs out. <laughs> And that requires that you have to sit and think about if there were a worst error in this particular piece of code, where would it be? And if it was there, how might I discover that it's there and then, and then fix it? Uh, and so we applied that uh, very aggressively, actually, uh, and produced this software product with remarkably few uh, uh, defects. For that time, maybe 